In this video, we're going to use Swift date components to create date objects. And then I'm going to show you how to do a bunch of date calculations using those objects. Things like adding or subtracting days, weeks, months, years, right? What if you want to go 30 days into the past or 48 hours into the future? Or what if you want to find out how long it's been since a certain date, get the number of days, hours, minutes, etc. Or check if a day is the same date as another day and so much more. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Here I am in an Xcode playground and you can see by my comments what we're going to cover. But before we start, I want to talk about the workhorse, right? The thing that makes all of this possible and that is Swift's calendar object. And you can see I created a variable here called calendar and that just equals calendar.current, which is the system's current calendar. And I created the variable because we're going to use this a lot and I didn't want to write calendar.current a hundred times. So first let's create a date. And in order to create a date, we need some date components. So we'll say let date components equal and we'll initialize a date components object. Now you can see uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can create a date from, right? Year, month, day, hour, minute, nanosecond, weekday. We don't need all this. Don't be overwhelmed. As you can see, they're all optionals and they all have default value. So we're going to keep it simple with the basics. We're going to do a year, month, and a day. But first, we also need the calendar. So we'll create date components, calendar. That is the calendar.current. So we created up here and we'll say year. Now the order of these parameters matter. That big long list that you just saw has to be in that order. Uh, so the year we'll say 2008. The month we'll say April or four. And the day, I don't know, we'll say 15th, tax day. So what I just created was date components, right? Year, month, day. And now I need to create a date from those components. So say let composed date equal calendar. Again, we're using the Swift calendar object here. Again, that's calendar.current dot date from and you can see it takes in date components. Well, we just created those date components up there on line seven. So we'll say date components. And if I run this, you should see the date of April 15th, 2008. Now you see at 12 AM, we didn't specify hours, minutes or anything like that, but I told you they have default values and the default value is 12 AM if you don't specify the time. So that is how you create a date object from date components. Let me go up top here and show you another way to create a date. And that is like right now. And you'll use this a lot when creating dates. So we can say let right now equals date. And anytime you just initialize a date like I just did, you'll see here over on the right, December 1st, 2023 at 1020 AM. That is the current time I am recording this. And all we did was initialize a date. So that is how you get like right now, this second. You may also see, so I'm gonna make this of type date so it knows what I'm doing. You may also see dot now. That's just syntactic sugar. It's the same exact thing as what we just did with date in parentheses, but you can see that creates right now in time. Now, the reason I wanna point this out is because a lot of times you might think, hey, let me get right now and that will give me December 1st. But you'll notice it's at 1020 AM. It does keep the time. So that time thing's a little tricky, which we'll come back to because it can cause some bugs in your date calculations if you don't account for it. But again, we'll address that in a little bit. Now that we have a date here from our components, we can pull components from a date. So let's say you, you have a date object, you know, from the server or somewhere in your app. And you're like, you know what? I just wanna get the month from that date object, or I just wanna get the time from that date object. So we can pull out specific components and let me show you. So say let pulled components equal calendar. Again, told you we'd use this a lot, dot date components from. And you can see we pass in a set of components and then a date. So the set we wanna pass in, let's say we want dot day and dot month. Again, if you wanted time, you do hours, minutes, if you wanted the year. So whatever components you wanna pull from the date, you pass those in. Again, I'm just doing day and month. And then you need to pass in the specific date. So we'll do compose date. That is our April 15th, 2008. And on compose date, this does return an optional when you create a date, because if you pass in bad date components, you know, you can't create a date from it. We're going to force unwrap that, assuming we created good days here. Now, if you're hard coding this, this is always going to work. But now let's run this and see what our pulled components are. So you see month is four, day is 15, is leap month false. We didn't ask for that, but it gave it to us anyway. So again, I am pulling specific components, day, month, hours, week from a date, and we'll say, you know, dot now. So if we run that on dot now, you can see it should be December 1st, right? Month 12, day one. Now day, month, year, that's pretty obvious, but a common one you may need is to pull the specific weekday from a date. So we can say let weekday equal calendar dot component. And you see, we're pulling a specific component before we were pulling a set of components, right? Maybe we wanted more than one, but if we know all we want is one component, right? Just the weekday in our case, or you want just the day or just the hour, then you can pull a singular component from a date and we'll say dot weekday from, we'll say composed 
date. Actually, I don't want to do that because I don't want to go back and check what day of the week April 15th, 2008 was. So we'll say dot now because I know December 1st is a Friday. So you can see it returns an int and that's how weekdays are represented. And it starts with Sunday and Sunday is a one. So you can do the calculation from there. So Friday, as you can see, is a six and you would get that back to know what day of the week a specific date was. Now let's add and subtract date components from a date. Like say we want to go back five days or three months. So let's say let 10 days from now equal calendar. Again, it's the workhorse dot date. You can see by adding value to. Now there's a whole bunch of these. As you can see, you can explore all that calendar has to offer. We're kind of just scratching the surface, but I'm covering some common useful ones, but it can do a ton. So, okay, by adding value to. So we want to do a component. So you can see day, era, hour, minute. We're going to add a day because we're going 10 days into the future, but you can see how you could do any time period you like. And then the value, we're going to say 10. That's if we we're going into the future to right now. So it's December 1st. This should be December 10th or 11th, I guess. 11th of December at 10, 29 a.m., which is the time. If you want to go back in time, you just do a negative 10 on the value. So if I run it, you should see we'll go 10 days before December 1st, and that was November 21st, and that's days. So say you want to do 10 years from today, you should see December 1st, 2013. So again, the key component here, pick your component, day, week, month, year, minute, whatever you want. Again, we did day, whatever value. If you want to go back in time, use a negative number. If you want to go forward in time, use a positive number, and then you add it to whatever day you like, right? We did dot now for right now, but you could pass in compose date and it would add 10 days to April 15th of 2008. So that is how you can calculate days in the future or calculate days in the past. Now let's address that pesky time bug I mentioned when you did something like just dot now, because it will give you the exact hour and minute for right now. But sometimes when you're doing date math, you want to say, hey, give me all the items prior to today's date. And you may pass in right now, but that's going to take in the time into account. So that is going to do everything prior to 1029 a.m. So anything on December 1st after 1029 a.m., right, wouldn't be included because if you pass in dot now, it does take the time into account. So a lot of times you can get the beginning or the end of the component to make sure you encapsulate the entire day, month, year, whatever time period you're passing in. So to show you that, let's say let beginning of day equal calendar dot date interval here. Say the component we want the day for dot now. So we have the day for right now, but then you do dot start. You can see it is the start date and we're going to force unwrap that because we know we're going to get a good date there. So now when I run it, you're going to see instead of December 1st at now 1032 a.m., December 1st at 12 a.m. So this gets the start of the day. Similarly, you can do dot end. End is a little tricky if I remember correctly. Yeah, because it's December 2nd at 12 a.m., right? Technically, right, it should be December 1st at 11.59, 59 nanoseconds, right? 99999. Uh, I'm sure actually when I say technically that's what it should be, I'm sure the computer scientists that have figured this out no way better than I am. And there's a reason they do this, but I want to point this out. If you do dot end, you're going to see it's technically the very start of the next day. So that may mess up your calculations. So a lot of times you may need to like back up here, we're adding a components, subtract one second from it or subtract one nanosecond from it, depending on what you want to do to get you to, you know, December 1st, 11.59 p.m., 59 seconds, and 59 nanoseconds, whatever that would be. So just a little note there if you're using .n, but that is how you get the start of the day, start of the month, start of the year, right? Let's do start of the year for .now. We'll say start. So this should be January 1st of 2023 at 12 a.m. So we should get. Yep, January 1st, 2023 at 12 a.m. This will come in handy if you're trying to, you know, fetch items within a certain date period because you want to make sure you encapsulate the entire day. Now, let's say you want to get how long it's been in between two dates. So we'll say let time interval equal calendar dot date components. And you can see we have the option for a from date and a to date in the components. So we pass in a set. So we'll say dot day. We want to get how many days it's been from our composed date, which again is April 15th, 2008 to dot now. And then I'll say let days since equal time interval dot day. And that'll pull out how many days it's been. So if I run that, 5,708 days. Let's change this to year. And we'll say year down here. This is just a little extra. It's giving it to me right there. Should be 15 years, right? Yep, it has been 15 years or 5,708 days. I want to see how many minutes it's been. I can just get rid of this actually because it's printing it off here on the right. Uh, I think minutes is not plural, just minute. And if we run it, it's going to be a big number, right? What is that? 82 or 8,220,218 minutes. So anyway, the point is you can get 
whatever time component you want between two dates, whether it's minutes, days, years, months, weeks, whatever. And finally, let's check to see if a date is in the same day. So say let is same day equal calendar dot is date one in same day as, right? So that's the obvious one. We can say is compose date in same day as dot now. We know the answer is no. This should print off false, definitely. We can say is dot now in same day as dot now. Of course that is going to be. So let's run it just to prove that it does work. That is going to be true. So this is a like shortcut for in same day because this is very common. But if you notice, you can do dot is date one equal to a second date. And then you can specify the granularity in the same month, in the same year. So if we do that, we'll say is compose date equal to dot now down to the year. And this is gonna answer false, but I'm gonna change the compose date to this year to make it true. So if I go back up to compose date, instead of 2008, let's do 2023, run it again. Now our compose date is in 2023, which is equal to what now is 2023. Granularity of the year gives us true. So these are some basic examples of date math. And again, calendar is the workhorse. There's a ton of methods as you saw as I was going through this. It's super powerful and it makes date calculations super easy as you saw here. And if you're here learning about date calculations, I bet you're building a pretty good app. And you're gonna need a website or an iOS developer portfolio to showcase that app. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you get that iOS developer portfolio, blog, or personal website up and running very quickly. Now I know we're all developers with the skills and the desire to build the web page ourselves, but I would argue there's an opportunity cost to your time. If you're an iOS developer trying to build a great product, a great app, maybe spending a lot of time learning the ins and outs of web development, responsive design, isn't the best way to spend your time. That's why I recommend Squarespace to build that personal website, the blog, your portfolio, or maybe a landing page for your app. They have all kinds of beautiful themes and templates to get you started. They handle all the analytics and the SEO for you. Again, it just saves you so much time so you can get back to doing what you wanna do, and that is building iOS apps. So when you're ready to get started, go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.